I'm back guys and today I have a little friend with me. This is a vampire crab and in this video I'm gonna tell you how you can keep and breed these beautiful crabs successfully. Of course as detailed as possible and necessary and as always with German accent. So let's put this little crab back in the terrarium before it sucks the blood out of my body and let's get straight into the content so stay tuned. Of course I was just kidding and these little crabs do not suck blood. They are harmless and not aggressive. They are even good to handle because their claws are not really big enough to hurt human beings. The name has nothing to do with their feeding habits, but rather with their bright contrastingly yellow or orange eyes of some Geosesama species. In this guide I will focus on Geosesama denali because this is a species I keep. But they all have very similar demands regarding their environment. They mainly differ in their coloration. But first of all some basics that you need to know in order to be able to set up an optimal vivarium for the crabs later. The distribution area of these little crabs extends from Sri Lanka to a large part of Southeast Asia. Vampire crabs are predominantly terrestrial, but most species need at least a small source of fresh water. In their natural habitat they live in rainforests next to rivers and streams. They prefer swampy areas where the ground layer and the water provide sufficient food sources and places to hide. So let's go a little bit more into detail how to keep and breed these beautiful crabs. I have divided the video into 7 main chapters. Chapter 1 Geosesama Denale Geosesama Denale is the most beautiful vampire crab for me and with a maximum carapace size of 2.5 cm or 1 inch, they are also one of the larger species. The coloration of the carapace is mostly yellow to salmon, but I have also seen animals which had a predominantly dark carapace. The legs and the claws are purple. In most cases, the claws of the male crabs are larger. The most eye-catching feature of these crabs are probably the yellow or orange colored eyes. The life expectancy in captivity is approximately 3 years. A lot of people say that these crabs are nocturnal, but in my opinion that's not 100% correct. They just don't like too bright light. The crabs love to hide under stones, roots or in burrows they have dug themselves. But as already mentioned, if the light is not too bright, you can also observe them during the daytime. Chapter 2 How to set up a tank for vampire crabs Guys, let's directly continue with the probably most complex chapter. As already mentioned, vampire crabs come from the warm humid tropics with little temperature fluctuations throughout the year. Even at night the temperature only drops moderately. This fact is crucial when setting up a terrarium for vampire crabs. The probably best way to set up a terrarium for vampire crabs is using a terrarium made of glass. Glass can resist the high humidity and allows the water part to be created. For a small group of three animals a well-structured tank with a ground area of 30 cm by 30 cm is sufficient. But this size should really be considered as minimum requirement. I would rather recommend using a tank size of 60 cm by 30 cm for a group of 5 crabs. Of course a larger terrarium can always be chosen for the well-being of the animals. You can also significantly increase the space for the crabs by creating a back wall for the terrarium. The back wall not only looks good if you design and plant it accordingly, but also offers the crabs plenty of additional space to climb and retreat. Many species are excellent climbers. You can easily build a back wall with the styrofoam plate as basis some pieces of wood and some pots for plants. Then you can use expanding foam to design the back wall and fix all the components. 
Afterwards use a sharp knife, a tool to cut the shiny surface of the foam. Then use silicon and coconut fiber or any other kind of terrarium substrate to cover the foam. Guys, this was only a really simplified instruction. The design of a bag wall is probably a topic for a separate video. You shouldn't skimp on substrate when setting up a terrarium for vampire crabs. Many species like to build burrows and a higher layer of soil is essential for this. Possible materials are coconut soil, terrarium soil, coconut husks, sphago moss or a mixture of different materials. You should definitely put some tropical springtails and tropical isopods into the terrarium. These tiny creatures are really beneficial and important because they keep the terrarium clean for you. Springtails prevent the formation of mold and are a good source of living food for young crabs. Isopods eat leftovers in the terrarium and sometimes also end up as live food themselves. The terrarium should also have a drainage layer to avoid that the soil becomes too marshy. As drainage layer expanded clay is a good choice. The drainage layer should be the bottom layer and needs to be separated from the soil with a thin layer of anti-weed fabric for instance. On top of the soil you can add some leaf litter and botanicals. This additional layer looks very natural and provides additional places for the crabs to retreat and hide. In addition to that you can structure the terrarium with wood, stones and rocks. Guys, make sure you build a lot of caves and barriers so the crabs can avoid each other. Of course you can also plant tropical plants into the substrate, but more on this later. Vampire crabs are predominantly terrestrial crabs, but most species still need at least a small water part. Theoretically a bowl of water is sufficient. The water bowl must be deep enough so that the crab can submerge completely. These bowls are practical for small terrariums, but in my opinion they look very artificial. I prefer to provide a larger water part which is implemented in the scape. My Geosesama generally really love to roam underwater. The water part is also very important because most species mold in the water. When designing the water part it is always important that the crabs have the opportunity to get out of the water. This is really crucial because otherwise the crabs will drown. I have never seen a vampire crab drowning. They are good climbers and can survive a long time underwater. They will only drown if they really have no chance to get out of the water. In order to avoid fights between the crabs, several exit possibilities like sticks or wood should be provided. Regarding the water parameters, the crabs are not demanding. As with all aquarium invertebrates, the water should be free of copper, chlorine and other substances that you don't want to have in the water. As already mentioned, these crabs are excellent climbers. You definitely need a lid for your tank if you want to prevent the crabs from visiting you in the bathroom in the evening. The crabs, especially the small ones, will find every little gap in the cover and will escape. Believe me, I speak from experience. Plants. According to my experience, vampire crabs do not really eat terrestrial plants. This fact is very pleasing and means that you can plant the terrestrial area densely. Dense planting definitely contributes to the well-being of the animals. The disadvantage is you will not see the crabs that often because they have more possibilities to hide. You can also use builds for other tropical animals like dart frogs as guide. Tropical plants such as fiscus, ferns and bromeliads are ideal for your vampire crab terrarium. Bromeliads do not grow in the crab's natural habitat, but the crabs absolutely love to use 
the bromeliads as hiding place. On wet surfaces in the terrarium you should also plant some moss like java moss. If the moss grows well the terrarium will look very natural in a short time. So now let's talk about the plants in the water part. Unfortunately the aquatic plants are mostly eaten by the crabs. At least that's my experience. I highly recommend using floating plants like salvina or duckweed. They propagate like crazy and the crabs love to eat these plants. In addition to the floating plants you can use robust plants like anubias, java fern and moss. But as already mentioned there is a high risk that these plants will also be nibbled. Always try to plant the riparian zone densely. Young crabs always live close to the water and the dense planting significantly increases their chance of survival. Guys, very important. Wash all the plants carefully and remove all the substrate from the plants before you plant them into your terrarium. Pesticides can easily kill your crab population. And guys, if you find this video beneficial and are interested in more content like this, do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for your support. So let's go on with the climate in the terrarium and the technical equipment which is required. Okay guys, in this subchapter I gonna explain you which climatic conditions you need to ensure in your crab terrarium and which technical equipment will help you. As briefly explained at the beginning vampire crabs come from the tropics and require consistently warm temperatures and high humidity. I recommend a temperature between 22 degrees and 28 degrees celsius. At night the temperature can drop slightly but the temperature should never fall below 18 degrees celsius for a long period of time. Normally the required day temperatures are reached with the room temperature and the lighting of the terrarium. If not, you can use a heating mat to slightly increase the temperature. If you want to use real plants and not only artificial plants, you need a lighting. Just make sure that the lighting is not extremely bright and there are some shady places in your terrarium. Otherwise the crabs will hide most of the time. In addition to the temperature the humidity is also very important. In my terrarium the humidity is always between 80 and 95%. For small terrariums you can use a spray bottle and spray by hand throughout the day. For larger terrariums I always recommend using a rain system. I use a rain system and a mist system to keep the humidity high in my terrarium. The mist system is definitely optional, but I love this foggy rainforest look. The water part is probably the most flexible part. If you only use a small water bowl in your terrarium, no technical equipment is needed. If you want to create a larger water part, you can implement a water feature like a waterfall or a small stream. Therefore you can use a small submersible pump which can be hidden in a small filter chamber for instance. If you have enough space you can also implement a heater. That also helps to reach a required day temperature in the terrarium. Chapter 3 Where to buy vampire crabs Guys definitely try to buy homebred crabs if you have the opportunity. This really helps to save the population in the natural habitat. The crabs which are sold in most online shops are taken from the wilderness. Another advantage is that homebred crabs are significantly more stable and are already used to live in a terrarium. If you do not have the possibility to buy homebred ones, make sure you buy them from a reliable and experienced dealer. This is particularly important if the crabs are purchased online and shipped. And it is even more important if you live like me in a climate zone with colder seasons. The crabs are very sensitive to cold temperatures. To be honest I could not buy homebred crabs myself and I had to purchase them online. But in the meantime I have sold a lot of crabs to people from all over Germany. 
So now my conscience is a little clearer again. Before putting the crabs into the terrarium make sure that your terrarium is cycled for a few weeks and the populations of springtails and isopods have already grown. At the beginning you will not see the crabs that often. They will hide a lot and have to acclimatize first. Guys, when I started keeping crabs I initially thought that all my crabs were dead because I didn't see them anymore. After a few weeks I discovered many small baby crabs in the bank area and I was very relieved. Chapter 4 Co-housing So now the crabs are in the terrarium, the question is what else can we put in the terrarium to make it more lively. This is optional as the crabs are happy on their own. I have heard of cases where the crabs were kept together with dark frogs or geckos. This will probably work if the tank is set up in a certain way. In this case, baby crabs are always at high risk of being eaten by these animals. I always recommend putting in some neocaridina shrimps on the water part, provided that the water part is large enough and you are not only using a bowl. These shrimps are undemanding, multiply at a good pace and are usually too fast to be caught by the crabs. They also look really nice and eat leftovers and algaes. There is also a wide range of color variants to choose from. Snails are also a nice addition to every vampire crab setup. Snails like ram swan snails and bladder snails will probably be eaten by the crabs. Whereas burrowing snails like trumpet snails or larger snails like racetrack snails have a good chance to survive. Snails are also very beneficial to get rid of leftovers and algae in the water section. If you want to add fish to the vivarium it becomes a little bit more complicated. Even for small fish you really need a large water section. Otherwise they cannot avoid the crabs and will be eaten. In addition to that the fish need enough space to swim and feel comfortable. In case your water part is large enough I can recommend fast agile fish like chili rasporas or fish which have a high reproduction rate like guppies. But keep in mind that guppies are big enough and can easily eat your baby crabs. What you should definitely not do is mix different crab species. They will probably fight and can kill each other. Chapter 5 How to feed vampire crabs Feeding vampire crabs couldn't be easier. Most species are predominantly carnivorous but they also eat a lot of plant based food. You can feed them special crab pellets, fish flake food or pellets for catfish for instance. Another option is frosted food like bloodworms, artemia or shrimps. Fresh fish is another source of protein that is very popular. But they also love to hunt live food like small crickets and mealworms. As already mentioned they also like to eat aquatic plants. Especially duckweed is particularly popular. Make sure you always have some leaf litter in your terrarium. You can use dried leaves like beech, oak or catapa leaves. Leaves are preferred to be eaten under water. You can also feed fruits and vegetables like cucumber, apple, pear or bananas. If you want to feed fruits and vegetables wash it carefully and remove the peel. In addition to that always remove the seeds of the fruits because they can contain hydrocyanic acid. Do not feed fruits with high amount of fruit acid like oranges and grapefruits. I regularly feed some crushed cuttlefish bone. This is not the favorite food of the crabs but it is a good source of calcium and minerals. And last but not least I highly recommend providing several feeding grounds so that weaker animals also have the chance to get food. Chapter 6 How to Breed Vampire Crabs Guess what? You have to make sure that you have male and female crabs in your terrarium. But how do you distinguish between male and female crabs? Guys, to be 100% sure you have to check the abdomen. The male crabs have a triangle shaped abdomen. 
The abdomen of the female crabs is significantly larger and roundish. You can use a transparent vessel like I did to identify the sex of the crab. It is assumed that the rain season encourages the crabs to mate. The mating itself looks really rough. The male lying on his back pulls the female towards him. I was really lucky to have the opportunity to film a mating. Ideally the mating worked and the female crabs carry their eggs until the baby crabs hatch. The whole brood care lasts approximately 3 to 4 months. The baby crabs are only a few millimeters in size and are almost transparent. The baby crabs are very tiny and hide next to the water most of the time. Vampire crabs are sometimes cannibalistic, that means that baby crabs are sometimes preyed upon by adult animals. If you want to ensure that most of the tiny baby crabs survive, the best way is to use a small breeding box. These boxes are quite cheap and you can set them up easily. Just fill in a layer of terrarium substrate, add some spring tails and isopods and position a small bowl with water inside the box. Add some sphagnum moss and a little bit of wood and rocks to provide some places for the crabs to hide. And guys remember, the crabs always need a possibility to exit the water part. The climatic conditions in the box must correspond to the conditions in the terrarium. A high humidity and wet substrate like sphagnum moss are always beneficial. As soon the breeding box is set up, you can put in a female and a male crab or just catch a pregnant crab if you spot one in the terrarium. After the mating the female crab normally lives withdrawn and hides a lot. After the young animals have hatched, adult crabs can be removed from the box. The male crab can theoretically be removed earlier. Now the baby crabs are isolated and can grow up without the risk of being eaten by the adult animals. Chapter 7 How to maintain the terrarium Ok guys, the good news is maintaining a vampire crab terrarium is not really complicated, but some things still need to be taken into account. Check the temperature and the humidity regularly. If you do not have a rain system, use a bottle to moisten the terrarium regularly. If you use a rain system, make sure that the reservoir is filled with RO water and the rain interval is sufficient. If your setup has a larger water part, make regular water changes to guarantee good water quality. If you are just using a water bowl, replace the old water by fresh water. In case you use feeding bowls, make sure they are cleaned regularly. Ok guys. These are the most important insights I have gained in 3 years of keeping crabs. If you want to see how my huge paludarium for vampire crabs looks like, watch this video next. I hope the guide was helpful for you. Do you still have questions? Let me know in the comment section. I will answer as soon as possible. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.